Hi, I'm Steve Van Meter and welcome to your Monday Night Premiere where we take 15 minutes every Monday and Wednesday to try to make sense of the market. And really, we're in a market that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, to take today, for example, trading volumes were super low. I mean, not at the all-time low, but very, very close. So that means not a, there was not much buying and not much selling going on today. But yet, stocks eked out a small gain. There's been selling from, from institutional investors, selling from retail investors. So who's buying? Well, there's only one buyer left, and that is corporate corporations. They're buying their stocks back. They've been doing it uh, since the uh, tax cut got passed. Now, they've been doing it before, but they really amped it up when the tax cut got passed uh, last year. And they've been taking their, their tax proceeds and borrowing money and just pumping it into their stock price. So their executives who have been granted huge stock options can cash out. And there's two ways they can do it. One is they become vested, they can sell, and then they can quit their job. And many of them are. So it's leaving this whole entire market propped up by uh, corporate share buybacks. Leading over this weekend to Goldman Sachs saying, hmm, if these things got banned, if, if corporation, you know, if Congress passed a law saying corporations can't buy their stock back, the market would crash. You think? Oh, yes. Big time. Because it's way overvalued and it's being pumped up artificially by corporations. So uh, there wasn't a lot going on today because we're roughly about 50% of the S&P 500 is blacked out from buying a stock back. That is going to increase to roughly, I want to say 75% by the end of this week. We have three major treasury auctions coming up, uh, three, 10, and 30 years this week. So we have a lot of mispositioning in the market too. Rather than buying stocks, investors are turning to what sh shorting volatility, just like they did back in early 2018, where volatility exploded and stock prices crashed because, hey, it was a good idea then, it's probably a good idea now. So they're back shorting volatility and going into a period where markets are going to be very illiquid because as the corporate share buyback out uh, peaks uh, roughly in another week and a half to two weeks at 80% of the S&P 500 companies, there's not a lot of people left to buy. And when there's not a lot of buyers, prices fall to find where buyers are at. And of course, right now we know that most people are already invested pretty heavily in stocks. The content of this video is provided as educational information only. It's not intended to provide investment or other advice. It's is not to be construed as a recommendation or solicitation by selling security, financial product, instrument, or participate in any particular trading strategy. This video was prepared by Stephen Van Meter, own personal capacity. The opinions expressed video that I'm going to do not reflect the view of Atlas Financial Advising or Stephen Van Meter Financial. So we have a, we continue to go down this path of a very lopsided market. You have virtually everybody thinking, you know, the stocks are going up. Yeah, there's going to be massive economic growth. The economic data is saying otherwise. And you have a small number of people, myself being one of them, who said, I've seen this before in the last two recessions. See, that's one of the things if you think that I don't get is why people think this time's different. I mean, did, did, they, did we fix a problem from 2000, 2002 and 08 and 09? And no, we plastered over them with debt. And, uh, but for some reason, everybody thinks that that's A-OK -okay now. And then finally, the government, the Federal Reserve, and the other central bankers have got the answer to all their problems. Well, eventually we'll find out that you cannot print your way out of a financial problem. Uh, history has proven this so many times over. Uh, it, it's just riddled in the history books of monetary policy or currency. You can go and read up on any of those topics and find out that you can't do it. But it doesn't keep everybody from trying. And that's really what's important because maybe eventually... If you try long enough, it'll work. Uh, so there's a small number of people like myself that think that no, the, the whole scheme is in, gonna come in reverse. The monetary decelerations are gonna lead to lower interest rates, not higher, and lower stock prices, not higher. And uh, I, I'm going to be eventually proven true, mainly because history says uh, that I will be. And I'll stand by that until otherwise spoken. So let's see what the hedge funds have been up to. Now, this data is always a week old, but it's still interesting enough. So we've seen hedge funds are were, are still very short. This is a 10-year treasury yield. So they're short, meaning they're betting on yields rising as yields fall. So these hedge funds actually took losses in these positions. And you can see they backed off some of their short positions, but they're still heavily short. And it's not just they that are short. There are lots of other ways to short the bond market. And there are still a very large number of short positions, even though the hedge fund industry has backed off a bit. 
And we see that just this past week, this green bar going down means they've increased their shorts a bit, uh, thinking that perhaps this is a bottom in yields and it's going higher. It's not. Monetary decelerations lead to lower long-term yields, not higher. Let's take a look at the 30-year. They came and backed off that, but they are still uh, relatively short here. And again, there are other people and other investors that are still very short. As this unwinds, this leads to lower treasury yields, not higher. Uh, and looking at, you know, this is really interesting. And we'll look at the chart if we have time. Oil is very correlated to five-year treasury yields, among other things. And speculators are driving up. You see hedge fund managers are buying long oil contracts, meaning they believe price of oil is rising, even though inventory data is saying not so much. And, it, and right now, oil inventories should be rising because this is a time where refineries are in maintenance season. So there should be... Um, I'm sorry, there should be a draw against oil right now, and there's not. There's been more builds than draws, and I'm sure this week we'll see more of that because as the global economy slows down, well, so too does the demand of oil. But based on this, you can see that the market is positioning for a big, strong economic rebound. Uh, they are wrong. Uh, looking at the S&P 500, you can see hedge funds were short uh, going into this rally. So they took losses there and have now turned some of those short contracts into long contracts as it's roughly about to peak again. Um, they didn't learn their lesson there. I am assuming nobody here has any interest in Euro futures. Let's look at gold. Uh, we see the hedge funds are fairly long and gold is actually coming down. I uh, suspect that hedge funds will back off this position and look to short uh, gold back down a bit uh, before things are all said and done there. Uh, NASDAQ, again, NASDAQ rallied as hedge funds were short, took losses there and are now just slightly long on their contracts. Same with the Russell 2000, small caps, they were short going into the rally. So they made money here, lost money here and are back shorting small caps again. And the number of long dollar contracts are fading. Uh, even as the dollar seems to be holding its strength there fairly well. But here's what's really interesting. If you want to talk about probably the most interesting chart here, it's this one. And this is VIX or volatility future. So you can see that hedge funds were short volatility going into the uh, here. Uh, this is the big vol explosion. And then they did it again back in October. Big vol explosion. And guess what? They are short and not just them. A lot of people are very, very short volatility, even more so than they were back in February of 18 when volatility exploded. So what did they learn? And nothing. They just went back to the punch bowl and thought, well, this time it'll work. So one of the, the headwinds against stock prices is volatility. You can only suppress volatility to a certain point. And at some point it gets so cheap that people will buy it to hedge their portfolio. And if more people start buying, you get a squeeze, short, what's called a short squeeze. And all of a sudden these short volatility contracts get unwound yet again. And no doubt we will see that. Now, one thing I was thinking about, um, and let me just switch over I, to this chart here, the M2 money supply. So on a, on a quarterly rate or a three month rate of change, it's sitting at half a percent, multiply that by four, and it's telling us the annualized rate should be falling to at some point to 2% a year, which is very weak, and that this should eventually contract going into the next recession. Now, what, what we didn't have last week was this chart here of commercial industrial loans because it wasn't updated. And we've seen this rise on a year over year basis in commercial industrial lending, mainly because these companies have been kind of blocked out of the short term loan market due to rising short term rates. So they went to the long term market to borrow money. And this is starting to roll over. In fact, if we zoom in on the five year scale, we can see it's peaking and rolling over. Now, this is significant because money is created in our economy when people borrow. And so you say, okay, well, borrowing has increased uh, since the first part of 2018, and now it's plateauing and rolling over. If this stretch from 2018 up here could only generate let's see, 2018 and up, effectively the growth rate of the money supply is largely flat despite all that borrowing from commercial and industrial lenders. As commercial industrial lending falls, what does that tell you in terms of what's gonna happen to the money supply? It's going down. What are asset prices very sensitive to? Changes in the money supply, although you would not know that 
by looking at the stock market today. You wouldn't you wouldn't actually make that conclusion uh, at all. But nevertheless, that is the case. All right, so let's go and take a look at some charts. S&P 500 started the day uh, a little bit lower. Let's look, it kind of took down and then traded higher. Again, the, the fund flows so people are selling. So who's buying? It's corporations that are buying. So the S&P 500 uh, closed up 0.1% today and on very low volume. How do we know? We can go look at the S&P 500, the largest uh, index or uh, ETF index matching the S&P 500. And you can see volume here is very low. This was one of the lowest days in more than a year, uh, almost as low as some holidays. And you can see there's just very, very few shares trading. Now, normally when you see few, very few shares trading, it means that the, there's the number of buyers are exhausted. I mean, there are, there just, we just, the market's just run out of people who want to buy either at this level or they're buying, but they're not getting very many shares because the price is so high relative to what they have to invest. And normally when you reach that point, you get a reversal wealth where sellers come in. And it's interesting that we're going into this corporate share buyback blackout period. Earnings for the first quarter are not going to be uh, anywhere good compared to estimates on December 31st. You have volatility shorted down to where it was back in February of 18 when the volatility exploded. And you have very low trading volumes showing there's not a lot of buyers in this market. So it's setting up this uh, potential for a big reversal in the market and it makes this pretty interesting uh, in my opinion. So let's take a look at uh, oil and gas stocks because tomorrow we get the API American Petroleum Institute report and then following that we get um, the official government report on Wednesday FVX. So let's go and put FVX in. So here's five-year treasury yields in purple, we'll zoom out a bit and you can see very nice relationship. And so five-year treasury yields have bounced uh, a bit. However, the trend is still down and oil and gas producing stocks have not fought, did not follow it down and have not have just kind of stayed flat. And so what this tells us is these stocks should go down and we can zoom out. Um, you can see even in two year period, it's just a nice uh, relationship that these two have. And there's a big gap here, but relationships are best viewed on a short-term basis. And this tells us that uh, one of these two is wrong. It tells us either yields are too low, which is unlikely, or stock prices are too high, which is the more likely case. And there's a simple answer for that is because banks are buying bonds. What did we say last week? 30 billion? I mean, they've been buying tens of billions of dollars worth of bonds you know, generally per month, now not every, or per week, not every week, but there's some weeks it's a whole lot more and some weeks less, but they're just consistently buying a massive amount of bonds. So you have to keep asking yourself, well, why are the banks buying bonds if the economy is so great? Well, if the economy is so great, the banks would be selling bonds to raise cash to lend. That's what they do. So yeah, there's something that banks know that the average investor doesn't know, and I would argue that's, well, a lot. All right, let's go back to the charts. Uh, take a look at gold. So gold came up. Here's this uh, resistance zone. Tried to break up there, get up to its 50-day moving average. It didn't. It was rejected immediately in early trading. And is now sitting right in its resistance zone. Again, failure to get through here does lend lower prices. And looking at how hedge funds are positioned, and they're not seeing prices rise. They took their long positions. Likely, they're going to go short and bring oil prices back down, at least that or oil prices, gold prices back down. Uh, that would be the logical conclusion. Uh, looking at gold miners, again, they kind of reacted up today, but traded, sold uh, down. They didn't close lower, but they traded lower, uh, closed higher on the day. And for fun, we'll take a look at the AGs. We see a little, you know, we had that big run last week, a little bit of pullback on Friday uh, with buyers coming in there. And you can see these buyers you know, see this candlestick? So prices came down and then got pushed back up. Today they came in and, you know, we're shorting again, even though in Asia markets uh, we're seeing buying uh, here. And there, there's just more and more bad news coming in this sector. We've got a major swine flu uh, going through Asia. But anyways, we see people came in and bought today, even though it closed lower. Uh, and I saw some videos out of um, Nebraska where, a farmer, you know, he took his drone out and he uh, had someone take him up the river. The, the damage is incredible. There's more rain coming 
uh, according to the forecast. And to make matters worse, way upstream, you know, we're talking like up in the Minnesota area, there's a lot of lot of ice that has not melted. Well, it's starting to melt as temperatures warm up. And guess what's coming? That's right, more flooding. So you have rain and snow melt. The situation there is not good. Farmers are either talk, already talking about hanging up their hat because they're too old. Uh, they're talking about not being able to plant and for this year and maybe not even next year. I mean, the damage is just incredible. So anyways, that's our update for Monday. I will be back uh, with you Wednesday and hopefully, well, I'm no doubt we'll have a lot of interesting things with uh, oil reporting and we'll see how the treasury auctions went and see if the stock market continued to grind its way higher or not. I'm Steve Van Meter. Bye now.